Hi guys, I am David, the Chief Technical Officer at AquaShield Control. We would like to help you with your very first steps with your new AquaShield unit which has just arrived. So let's unbox it together. As we have multiple options with different scope, in this video we will show you the most common expert level option. As you open the box, you will see the main unit, the main sensor modules, the light and humidity module, but we have hidden some parts also under the divider plate. So let's remove the unit and check what we can find. Here you can find two temperature sensors, two liquid level switches, and a long four wire cable for the humidity and light module. The next step is to connect the cables and sensors to the modules. The terminals are color coded to help you with the wiring. The main 12 volt power supply live terminal is orange with red wire. The neutral is dark gray with black wire. Generally the dark gray means neutral or ground. At switches and relays, green means 12 volt, but only for signaling, not for power. Please do not connect any power equipment to the relay terminals directly, but use 12 volt relays instead. White and blue are the main CAN communication. At the temperature sensors, white is 3 volt power supply, green is the data, and the dark gray is the ground. We use spring-loaded Vego terminals to ensure that your cable will never come loose. To put in the wires, you will need a good grip, so if you will mount the unit to a DIN rail, we recommend to do it now and later it will make your life easier. If you don't have a DIN rail, don't worry, still you will do great. If you have an extra pair of hands for the cable mounting, it will help a lot as well. For mounting the aqua shield to a DIN rail, you will have to flip the modules over and find the green colored DIN rail adapters. You have to mount the main module first, then slide the rail until it reaches the next module and so on. At the end, you will have all the modules mounted to the rail tightly next to each other. If you plan to use 12 volt relays or power supply that could be mounted as well, take into the consideration when you cut the rail. To open the terminal, you will need a small flat screwdriver. You have to push it into the upper small opening above the terminal until it stops. Then turn it up toward the center of the unit, meanwhile you keep pushing forward. You should be seeing the terminal opening. Push in the wire tip and carefully remove the screwdriver without the wire slipping out. Be careful not to push the insulated part of the wire into the terminal because it will not work that way. If you are too, we recommend one of you to hold the unit and open the terminal and the other to help put the wires into the terminals. The level switch and the relay are not sensitive for the polarity, so you can swap the cables back and forth. The level switch goes here. and the coil of the relays should be connected here. For the temperature sensor and the cable for the humidity and light module, the order of the wires is important. In the four wire cable, the wires have the same color code as the terminals. So please connect the cable accordingly to the main as well as to the humidity and light module itself. Again, here the orange is the power, dark gray is the ground, white and the green are the auxiliary CAN cables. The humidity and light modules has double connection points. It doesn't matter if you connect to the left or the right for terminals. For the right setup, please take a closer look how we connected on the video. For the temperature sensors, the red wire goes 
to the 3 volt white terminal, the yellow wire goes to the green data terminal and the black wire goes to the dark grey ground terminal. To power up AquaShield you need to get a 12 volt direct current power supply with at least 30 watt capacity. Make sure that the power supply is not connected to your home power network or not plugged in during the setup of AquaShield. Connect the AquaShield power cable's black leg to the minus terminal and the red leg to the plus terminal of the 12 volt side. It is important not to switch over the 12 volt and the high voltage side. Connect to the high voltage side according to the user manual of the power supply. To be able to connect the unit to the internet via Wi-Fi connection, you need to set up the AquaShield with your wireless network username and password. For this, you need to remove the top and the left side cover from the central module. The top cover should come first and it has four screws. Let's remove them. After we remove the cover, you can see the Raspberry Pi, which is the brain of the unit. For the easiest way to set up, we wanted to connect the Ethernet cable to the Raspberry while it is connected to the control module. For this, we have to remove the left side panel, which is held by two screws. Now you can connect the AquaShield unit with your router by the Ethernet cable and power up the unit. The LEDs on the central module are flashing. Congratulate yourself! You just started your fun ride with AquaShield. Please check our detailed description on our website about how to set up your Wi-Fi network and the first step for use.